What's up, dude? How what up? Doing? What up? Yeah, happy Friday, and uh, and we got a preseason game tomorrow. A uh, lengthy week of uh, training camp practices, four straight days, including a joint session with Washington. So, uh, ready to get to it. You're expecting a bunch of starters, right, to play in this game? Because I I I don't think they're going to do their dress rehearsal. In the third week, I think they want to do it now. And just in case there's any injuries, you still have time, you know, to recover. Uh, they did it last year, I think, that way. And then they came out the following week for one series and then sat their asses down, right? I think that's how it was. So are kind of expecting the same thing here, right? Yeah, that would follow Mike McDaniel's precedent. Uh, that would also uh, go by, I mean, what he just told us recently, which um, kudos to him. He's been a, a little more transparent with his uh, preseason uh, expectations uh, for, for games. So uh, we appreciate that in the media. And uh, he has indicated that uh, starters uh, will play. Even Tua Tungvaluwa went ahead and told us that he's open to play. And I think it makes sense for this game to be as close to a dress rehearsal as, as possible. It's the last home preseason game. So they had one. Now this is the second one. And then the, the last uh, session uh, would be uh, at Tampa Bay. So uh, give the home fans a little bit of a preview uh, at a, at a cheap price uh, to, to get in for the preseason and, uh, and let them see uh, what, what the Dolphins have uh, coming up in 2024. Uh, so yeah, I do expect uh, a, a lot of the, the starters and, um, and maybe not some of that are dealing with some minor injuries. So uh, you, you won't, won't see Jalen Waddle. You probably won't see Jalen Ramsey, um, uh, Jordan Poyer, uh, Teron Armstead. He's not playing the preseason anyway. So, I mean, a series of guys, but I mean, most of the starters, Javon Holland probably won't. Uh, so, uh, but most of the starters, I think uh, you, you would see. Yeah, I would think a lot of the line outside of Teron Armstead, uh, I think, except for Brewer, who... Right, right. Uh, I don't think we'll play, but uh, I'm I'm told we'll be ready for week one, by the way. We'll be ready for week one. So I already talked about it on the show yesterday. Uh, just like the OBJ thing, there's really nothing to be concerned about. He's going to be fine, dude. You know, it's just uh, they have no hurry in pacing him right now. I mean, they have no hurry in pushing him right now. They're just pacing right now. You know what I mean? So... That kind of stuff they're not gonna they're not gonna push. But I would imagine the rest of the line uh we should be able to see. And it'll be good good work for for the guards. The guy I am kind of concerned about is Win. That's the one I would be concerned about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you go down the line, yeah, I would expect Austin Jackson. I would expect, yeah, you see the the guard combination right now. Well, and now it, it, Liam Eikenberg would have to play center with Abram Brewer still week to week uh, with that hand issue. So um, I would, yeah, like you said, I mean, week to week, I, I would think that timeline would let him uh, come back by week one. But obviously you don't know uh, for sure until you get there. Uh, so now, yeah, Liam has to play center. Then expect to see uh, Lester Cotton get into that guard mix uh, as well, uh, as we've already seen Robert Jones uh, do. So, uh, yeah, the rest of the guys. And then Patrick Paul, Kendall Lamb uh, at, at the other tackle spot. Uh, get to see that. See, that'll be interesting to see who they start among those. Uh, Patrick Paul has impressed, as we saw in that first preseason game. So, uh, And you're right, with Isaiah Wynn, uh, I, I would be concerned uh, at this point because it's been since yeah. – uh, in October, so now we've gone, uh, boy, now we're about to hit 10 months. You know, we started training camp at the nine-month mark with the quadriceps uh, injury, and then uh, we're not sure if it's uh, still just the quadriceps or if it's led to uh, something else uh, in, in his legs. Uh, because Mike McDaniel noted some compounding things when uh, when he was asked recently about whether it's still just a quadriceps. So, uh, you know, one injury leads to another uh, with these things. So, um, you know, he I, I've seen him working out some on the side here and there, but, um, you know, that's that's been kind of like few and far between. So, uh, yeah, it is a little concerning. And, and not, Odell doing, not doing any football stuff. You have to be concerned. You know what I'm saying? Brewer was doing all kinds of football stuff, and it's a hand thing. So, right. you know, it's just he'll be fine. He'll he'll he's going to be ready for sure. And then Odell is running and he's, you know, it just they don't need to show anything off at this point in time. But this is why I don't when I mention the other guy, I don't put him in that class that I'm, I'm you know, everything I've heard. I'm don't worry about those guys. But that guy, you yeah, that one's legit because. That guy, you can't even play him right now.
because he first has to get back into football shape. So he's weeks away from actually getting into football shape because an injury prone guy like that, you can't just throw him back into the fire like that. And when you see the rest of these guys were ramped up, they went from the off season to, you know, training camp and now the preseason. So there, there was a gradual, you know, you know, takeoff to all of this. Isaiah Wynn has not gone through any of that. Isaiah Wynn now has to literally kind of, you know, really make a quick and, and as a lineman, that's a brutal process for him. So, you know, he's he's a ways away, man. Uh, yeah, if, Bill. You know, if, you see him on, if you don't see him on the field this week already, how much how much time does he really have to prepare? You know, he really pretty much ready. Then then you want to start him uh, on PUP for the season. Uh right. Yeah, puts him out at the four weeks, and then um, you'll you'll revisit after that, and and then let him take his time, which which Mike McDaniel's known to do. He won't put timelines, and I think that would give him the best opportunity to go ahead and and work without timelines. And you're right with with Odell Beckham Jr. I, now we can't get too specific on what we see them do on uh, on rehab assignments when they're working out on the side, but I'll just say he was. Uh, the explosion I saw uh, with him doing uh, a, a certain workout uh, that I can't name, uh, and and I know because uh, I went through uh, an injury and, um, and and had to do some stuff in in like rehab with a with a physical therapist, and uh, boy, he did it uh, way more explosively than I can. I understand he's a professional athlete, but I was just knowing the, the type of workout he was doing at and. I could tell he wasn't necessarily, it wasn't like a, like he's at a rehab stage the way I was when I did uh, a similar thing that I saw him do. So I got, you. I got you. I'm, I'm dude, I'm telling you. Yeah. He's fine. Right. He looks good. That's what I'm saying. He's, go he's going to be fine for week one. It's just, he's a veteran. So he's already running well. And, and if the deer is running well, then all you got to know, does he know the routes? And he's going to be, you got to understand, he's doing this. He's not doing anything inside. He's not the inside guy. That's not who he is. So he's going to be filling in for Tyreek or Waddle. When they rest, he'll come out and he'll run some routes for them. The middle is going to be Craycraft and Berrios and Malik Washington and those kind of cats. That's what the, those are the people that are going to decide the middle, along with John U. Smith, who will be working his own middle. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Odell is not going to carry a heavy load. Hopefully, you know, hopefully you have no injuries with Tyreek or, or Waddle, but he really shouldn't have to carry a heavy load. You have a lot of people, plus the running backs are going to catch the ball. There's going to be a different offense this year because the Titans actually going to be featured in the offense. Yeah, absolutely. And and people actually don't realize how many snaps Tyreek Hill is off the field for uh, on offense. I think if you look at snap counts, uh, I mean, there are some games where his snap count percentage on offense is like in the 50 percentage, you know, 50s uh, of percentages. Uh, right. Run plays, he's off the field. And then also just, I mean, how explosive he is. Uh, then he, he needs to come off the field, come back in, and that helps him avoid, uh, I think, some of those cramping issues that we see pop up sometimes. So, uh, it, so really, I mean, Tyreek Hill's stats are just it's just ultra, even more phenomenal based on that he actually has to sit a lot of snaps. <laughs> so, and sometimes it's a little bit of fore, foretelling, foreshadowing uh, of what the offense is going to do, he, specifically run plays. It seems like he, he's off the field more often. Uh, um, you know, Odell Beckham Jr., I don't know how much you're trying to get him involved in the uh, the blocking aspects, but having a, a third receiver uh, that really a, a lot of times becomes a number two, uh, those snaps when Tyree Kill is off the field and also is that third option when you have a third down where teams want to make sure they eliminate both the threat of Phil and Waddle, all that, plus John Smith, the addition and the incorporation of the tight end, plus that Devon A. Chan should get more involved in the pass game. All these things uh, really bode well for uh, Listen, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say tight ends because I think they're going to go even farther than people ever have seen because they have crapped on the tight end position for two years under Mike McDaniel, but that's because they've never had a guy that fits what they want. Now they got a guy that can do everything he wants, and watching him cut on the open field – 
there aren't a lot of linebackers that are going to stay with that dude. Sorry. So th this guy's going to be open, and it's going to be a safety blanket. But the guy that I really have enjoyed watching grow this training camp and preseason is Julian Hill, dude. Julian Hill is the guy that can punch you in the mouth and also go catch a pass. And he looks to me like what he didn't have last year. Last year, he didn't flow and he didn't have the confidence. So he dropped passes and he wasn't ready. Now he looks like he knows exactly the route he's running. And brother, he's catching everything with confidence because he's playing comfortable now. I actually think you even see two tight end sets here to make life easy for you know because that's what you're you're supposed to throw to your running backs you're supposed to run the ball you're supposed to throw to your tight ends this makes life easy that's how brady was killing you constantly with all that shit and then they hit you over the top with the rest of those guys you've taken away the easy math from this offense he's been he's been doing calculus you know he's been doing trigonometry that's what he's been doing. With his, that's why when Warren Sharp puts on his sh chart on the difficulty of the passing game of each team, two and the Dolphins are way out in the corner because they take more deep shots, more, more riskier passes. Why? Because you weren't passing to the tight ends. You weren't passing the running backs. This offense is going to be, I think, is going to be a different offense this year. It's actually going to resemble more of what you see in San Francisco. It, it, you know, you're going to see the middle of the field actually being worked on now. Yeah, and that'll simplify things so much for for Tua because you you, you mentioned yeah. just complexity of of the passing offense. So uh, that'll bode well uh, for him. And I mean, he was already handling it very well at, at the complex stage. So uh, now even easier uh, for him uh, if so. So uh, I'm with you that the the tight end uh, will be huge, and John Smith uh, specifically, and different ways that they could get him involved too. Yeah, that that's the beauty of it, dude. If if he's coming out of uh, out of the backfield, or it's a screen, or or he's running a route, a, a a nine route, or he's running across the field, he does absolutely everything out there. And so, to me, that's that's that, that's something that they just didn't have. The question is, the 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 slot receiver. I know that you could trust Craycraft to be a professional, right? But you want a difference maker. Is Berrios the difference maker? Is Malik the difference maker? What have you seen? How do you decipher the slot receiver? How do you define it at this moment if you had to explain it to the Dolphin Nation? Yeah, well, I mean, you have two uh, with, of utmost professionals with uh, River Craycraft and Braxton Berrios. That's why Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle they draft them one and two uh, when it comes to uh, their uh, their little uh, unit uh, competition that Wes Welker creates uh, among the wide receivers. They draft two teams, try to see who scores more points in Welker's um, system that rewards big plays, but then also uh, run the I think the right routes. I think blocking for sure is, is heavily emphasized. So you have two guys that are just really going to do their job and be reliable now uh, are they difference makers in games and that's one thing that uh I, I think we've seen enough of a sample size where we wouldn't put them in that category but uh Malik Washington I would say is showing traits of uh someone who can develop it into that he's showing some flashes then uh maybe just needs to get into the consistency level of it uh but I mean even just last practice we saw him catch a deep ball from uh, from Mike White, uh, had the ball uh, jarred loose uh, from a Washington DB as uh, as he went to the ground. So the referee officially ruled it, uh, that he caught it, and then fumbled it. The ball trickled out of bounds afterwards, so he was safe from that. Uh, so maybe he got to secure something like that. We've seen other big plays from him throughout training camp. And then also, uh, you know from his time in college, uh, how uh, leading the league in, or leading the nation in receptions, how he could just catch those short passes um, and and really just bring the volume of, uh, of, of the receptions into the offense. So uh, great to also see him add some of the downfield stuff uh, that we've seen, seen in camp. Uh, so looking to expand on that. And then hopefully he can become uh, a difference maker at that position. But to that point, uh, the Dolphins personnel, we talked about the tight ends, how they can run two tight ends. Uh, if you if you develop uh, the, that third wide receiver option, plus it, whoever you can put in the slot, then you can run the 3-4 wide. 
But then also, you have two tight ends. You can have two backs because you, you're going to use the fullback, Alec Engold, a lot. Mike McDaniel will have a lot of versatility in uh, personnel that he runs out there uh, because he can do the the 12, the 21. He can do the 3-4 wide. So it, it's it, the the roster that he has really allows him to be versatile with his personnel. You have Malik on, on the roster, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he's got to make this team, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think so, too. He's dropped too many passes. Mm. I will say that, that in this training camp, I've seen too many drops. Now, as I explained yesterday, a leopard doesn't change, you know, his stripes, right? It, they, it, they are what they are, okay? When you're Derek Hagan or you're James Blewett Pruitt, okay, that's a little before your time. Uh, but Derek Hagan is your time. Right, that's the Saban years. Yeah, and yeah. Both guys came into the league with hand issues. They used to drop passes. So when you got them, and they kept dropping passes, well, you you can't complain. You know, you knew who he was. You were just trying to change it, right? Well, Malik's the other way. You know, Malik had the best hands in college football last year he had the lowest drop percentage in college football last year so i'm gonna go with the guy that you know he's gonna go to his habits on who he is instead and and just like Derek hagan and just like james you blew it pruitt or uh the uh the late uh feral edmonds by the way that everybody talks about right i think is feral edmonds still with us or he's gone I don't know. Why do I think he passed away? But anyway, Pharaoh Edmonds, uh, super talent, but his problem was hanging on to a football, and it never changed. That was that was a problem throughout his entire career. And, you know, they're, they're not going to change. For me, Malik is not going to change. He's going to go back to being the sure-handed guy that he's always been, you know, throughout his career. And so I am not going to get – because some people are down on on, on the drops – I'm down on him, but I'm going to go, yeah, this is just a young guy. Remember Julian Hill? I just talked about it. That's not what who he was. He wasn't a guy who was dropping passes and shit like that when he was in college. So, you know, last year he was a young guy still adjusting, and now he's fine. To me, I, I see the same thing in Malik. I, I see a really tough kid from what I hear, and he'll be fine. He'll overcome. Yeah, I mean, people always need to understand just uh, the the difference in the speed of the game, difference in intensity when you go from college to the NFL, especially. I mean, like Julian Hill goes from playing at Campbell to now in the NFL, so that's a huge jump. And then uh, what what uh, Malik Washington is saying from playing in the ACC at Virginia uh, compared to the league, you know, it's not like he got even in the college level, he didn't get the SEC experience either. So um, it, it is a bigger jump uh, a little bit for uh, uh, for these guys. And uh, and for any rookie, it's going to be, even if you played uh, in, in the College Football National Championship, you played uh, all the big games and SEC schedule where you saw all these guys that are the top draft picks in the, in, in the draft with you. Um, it's still going to be a jump because you're playing against a lot of grown men who now are – developed four, five, six years into the league, and uh, it, it's just totally different. So sometimes you got to work out those uh, those early jitters. For some guys, it shows up in the game. Some guys, it's just that first training camp, and you get it out of your system. So hopefully for Malik Washington, that's the case. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Welton Rayom, proud sponsors of our program. And remember, we are in hurricane season, storm season. So if you deal with anything or even a broken pipe, don't call the insurance company. Call Welton Rayom first. They will send their adjusters, and then Welton Rayom will take on the insurance company for you, 954-966-4646. And those of you also dealing with bankruptcy issues or criminal defense, please call Welton Rayom, 954-966-4646. Liam Eikenberg, uh, back to center. Uh, Jack Driscoll has actually shown me a little something. Uh, the Harlow guy has been, you know, a professional. Uh, I think Robert Jones has made some improvement uh, overall. Um, obviously, uh, uh, Patrick Paul has looked fantastic. So 
Talk to me about the O line. Let's wrap it up with this. What two part question? First of all, I thought they played better last week than they practiced. Yeah, all the guys. And then this week, I thought they kind of picked up from the game and actually practiced well, I thought, against Washington overall. And what do you see, part two of it, what do you see of Liam Eikenberg back at center? Yeah, I think uh, you see some uh, comfortability for Tua with Liam Eikenberg there. He had him for eight games last year. Uh, so you've seen actually since he, he's come in a lot less of uh, fewer of the snap exchange issues. So uh, that's not been something that uh, has, has occurred really uh, since uh, Liam Eikenberg got back into the mix there. So good to see that. And then uh, – and. Uh, what was and then Patrick Paul? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say uh, he has been so impressive to uh, to come off the bat that quickly. Um, you, you went in thinking, okay, he's a guy that uh, has some. Um, uh, that he needs to make this transition into the NFL. He's he's kind of going to be a little bit of a project. He's got the physical tools, and that uh, the Dolphins coaching staff is going to have to take him under their wing a little bit and transform him. But uh, he has really in his first camp, so uh, he has he has surprised me in a positive way to be uh, this polished actually um, that quickly. Uh, where maybe I mean just the jump that you saw from early in, in camp to now it, itself has been uh, magnificent. So. That's a testament to just his ability to learn and this coaching staff's ability uh, to get to him. So I think you're really seeing that. And but sky's the limit for for him uh, with his natural abilities, his physical tools, and then just how he's able to uh, just progress so quickly. All right. Follow him on Twitter at David Ferronis underscore. And make sure, of course, you subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel and catch all his coverage this weekend as the Dolphins take on the Commanders. David, have a great weekend, my brother. We will talk on Tuesday. Thank you, sir. Good. There you go. David Ferronis, Welton Rayom, 954-966-4646. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.